Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about all sorts of wonderful things that are happening on my show this morning. City Council is talking uh, about officially naming all the par- all the trails in and around Missoula and also renaming some of the ones that you guys are used to knowing, like the Kim Williams Trail. So some of you may believe that the Kim Williams Trail basically is the whole trail from behind the Missoulian across the river, but it actually starts in the Hellgate Canyon and goes east. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later in the show, along with the uh, Historic Preservation Commission um, committee. It's going to be like kind of revamped and re uh, reimagined in a way. So the city council talked a little bit more about that, about requirements in terms of that. Um, following the uh, the um, I guess the difficulties they were working with in terms of the demolition of the old mercantile. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, I have no teen talk for you guys today. Um, we didn't have flagship this week because they had diversity week, which I'll talk about a little bit about later. But we do have a very special flagship Friday for you guys. It was uh, about two or three weeks in the making for this nice little... Uh, investigation type video for you guys so it's gonna be nice and fun um, I have a last chance art clips so there's two actually there's gonna be three I have three art clips but I'm gonna show you two of them uh, following the Zoo Town Arts Community Center and the Clay Studio of Missoula will be uh, wrapping up this week but of course you still have a whole nother week to check out uh, um, the uh, the, the art installation at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center, which will be ending on the 28th, the end of February. Um, other than that, I have dubbing stuff, and I have uh, the. This is the last weekend for the uh, Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, so I might, if I have enough time, I'll t- go over some of the films at the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. And I got pre-critic for you guys, judging the terrible movies that will be coming out this weekend and today. So moving on, let's talk a little bit about weather. So the weather is looking uh, pretty snowy outside let me just uh, bring that up for you in a second so here is what you can expect for your weather it is currently 27 degrees outside your high is going to be 32 your low is going to be 12 degrees your high is going to be uh, 31 by Saturday uh, but it's pretty much going to stay this way for throughout the whole entire weekend. Your snow chances are going to increase throughout the weekend. So that means for some of you guys who are going to be snowboarding or skiing, that means good news for you. Um, currently, uh, if you if we take a look at uh, this information from I, from what I got from onthesnow.com, you can see that Whitefish had uh, five inches of snow in the last 72 hours. 10 of their 14 slopes are open. Black-tailed Mountain Ski Area had six inches of snow in the last uh, 72 hours. Uh, Big Sky Resort uh, up in Boz- down in Bozeman and Big Sky area had two inches of snow in the last 24 hours, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, it doesn't look like Trenton Ski Pass area has any fresh powder for a while. Uh, Lost Trail uh, Powder uh, Mountain uh, has had 11 inches in the last 72 hours, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, Bridgeable had 10 inches in the last 72 hours. Discovery Ski Area had sub- two inches in the last 72 hours. Six of their eight slopes are open. Um, you have Great Divide. Uh, didn't have too much snow, but it's still open. Uh, Red Lodge had 10 inches in the last 72 hours, but one inch in the last 24 hours. But of course, you can expect all that to change as you get into your um, weekend area where snow is bound to happen, and most of those areas will get the heavy impact snow later on next week. So moving on, let's talk about some of the news items that are here and around. Um, Diversity Week uh, ended up ended this uh, week uh, wrapping up uh, at Hellgate, uh, Big Sky, and Sentinel High School where they talked about what makes uh, people different but also how they fit in with the rest of people what considers normal. I don't know. It's it's one of those things that it's a very, it's a very uh, broad term to describe a lot of different people. We live in America. America is nothing but diversity because it's made of diverse people. Uh, so today marks the end of Diversity Week uh, in the high schools where many local organizations um, and nonprofits and civic groups work with high school flagship programs to promote and educate kids on diversity. Many organizations, many organizations such as Empower Montana and Guts, Guts use, Girls Using Their Strengths, have talked with uh, teens about what it means to fit in with the world where everybody like looks like you and has your same beliefs, but being 
but not necessarily being YouTube famous. So uh, from improv groups to uh, Americans with disabilities demonstrating life for folks who are in wheelchair bound and have otherwise troubles with what most of us take for granted. The interview uh, with local flagship leaders who uh, spearhead this annual program spoke in length on Missoula Live the other day, and you can check it out every day at 5 p.m. on channel 190. It's usually on about 5 later in the evening. You can check it out. It's an hour-long program. We uh, interview nonprofits. It is called Missoula Live, but of course you'll be seeing all the pre-tape shows that we did from Missoula Live, which happens every second and fourth, or maybe first or third Monday. It's it's bi-weekly, so it's every other Monday uh, uh, until the uh, end of the school year, basically. Um, in the state, Standing Rock will no longer allow protesters to protest the Dakota XL pipeline um, completion of the Standing Rock Reservation. According um, to information taken from the New York Times, the final holdouts of this uh, sprawling pipeline protest camp south of, of where south of the uh, protest site were arrested Thursday and uh, the authorities began to use heavy equipment to tear down the uh, remaining structures to clear debris of federally owned lands where thousands had lived in recent months. Uh, about 200 uh, officers went down to clear the site and made about 49 arrests of some folks who decided to stay while most people left on their own um, jobs were the biggest push for this pipeline, while many speculate that if the w pipeline links, this could be a major threat to the Sioux, Sioux uh, tribe's drinking water because it's so close to the Missouri River. Uh, but then again, the original pipeline that cuts through, uh, it's not the XL pipeline, but it's the original pipeline that goes directly north to south through um, North Dakota, um, goes right over the Agala Aquifer, which provides most of the water in the Midwest region. Um, in national news, Kim, J oh, actually this is more like world news, Kim Jong-un's half-brother, Kim Jong-nan, uh, autopsy showed a chemical weapon, VX nerve agent, which was used in the fatal poisoning of Kim Jong-nan, older half-brother of North Korea's, uh, North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un. Uh, VX is an odorless substance that can exist as a liquid or gas. It can kill within minutes if it passes through the skin. It is 10 times more uh, toxic than sarin and classified as a weapon of mass destruction. Kim Jong-nan was walking through uh, the... Kula uh, Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia, where uh, two uh, women put a uh, rag over the alleged with the alleged substance over his face, in which Nan went to the airport nurse before falling down dead soon after. South Korea says that North Korea planned the assassination to make a martyr out of him to promote an ever-growing conflict between the two different, very different brother countries. North Korea refused to believe any results given by the Malaysian officials who made the autopsy. And that's everything you need to know what's happening in the in locally, nationally, and in the world today in Missoula. Uh, moving on, here's some MCAT news. MCAT, we host a uh, every single Saturday from 1 to 5. MCAT hosts a stop-in animation or a drop-in um, where we uh, provide kids with the opportunity to uh, use media arts to uh, express themselves, whether it's um, through stop animation, uh, live action, and we also have a VR to kind of like give them a chance to be immersed in a world where it's completely different and it's completely really cool and it's a nice little toy to entice some kids um, to just uh, come and join and we encourage parents to uh, stick around and join in all the fun as well. Um, moving on, I, uh, if you want to find out more information you can go to MCAT.org, it's really simple, MCAT.org, and you can find out more information about MCAT, and you go to How Do I, request an event recording, submit a program, and you can also register for our summer camps because our summer camps are already in swing, and people have been signing up, so you guys better jump on that before it's too late. We got a wilderness issue, uh, wilder not, uh, wilderness, um, uh, wildlife uh, filmmaking camp. We got a media camp, which basically describes all avenues of media. And of course, we have our animation camp, which kind of um, expands on our Saturday drop-ins. Uh, we also have a zombie um, workshop, which is more geared towards older kids, 14 and up. And this is for kids who are uh, interested in working with zombie makeup and doing all sorts of wonderful things. Um, that's pretty much it for your... Uh, um, quick little news, if you want to find out more information about my show and learn more about Wake Up Missoula and find all sorts of fun videos and other interviews that I've done in the past, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com 
slash wake up Missoula. So nice. We made it, you write it, all that stuff. Be sure to, to, uh, like me, uh, to, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube, like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter at wake up Missoula. So nice. It's so easy. You just have to type in wake up Missoula on any, any of your search engines and it'll pop up. We've been on the air for almost three years now. I want to say three years. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's about three years or so. Um, and you guys can totally check it out. We have a very solid program with a bunch of cool videos and also uh, everything local here in Missoula, in which um, t right now I have a bunch of new programs that will be happening throughout the weekend, which include the Montana Book Festival. It's the uh, the gala reading or gala reading for some of you who uh, would like to pronounce your A's differently. Um, there's the uh, Vibe, where they talk about wellness and um, youth and how it works well with uh, dancing and along with um, I guess the last one I have is from the president lecture series so when I come back I'll talk everything about uh, the terrible movies that will be coming out in theaters so uh, here are some of the new programs here on MCAT um, you can check it out MCAT.org anytime on our video on demand page so here's a little taste of what you guys can check it out because it's very hard to have a male dancer who can jump as high and he is flexible. So I don't know if you've noticed in the world of ballets that females are actually not jumping so much anymore. So as the, as the aesthetic changed for higher legs, the jumping female, that beautiful dancer who could jump, we see less and less of girls who can jump. They've all got beautiful high legs, but you see very few allegro dancers. So pushing flexibility in males, we're going to lose some of that power. Not saying that you, it can't be, be done, that you can't have both, but it's hard to balance it out. She hadn't told Layla what to expect. It was better not to. She waited outside, as she always did with the new girls. At first, she heard tussling. Later, there were screams, the girls followed by low grunts, then a loud thump before it went quiet. When Abdul Karim came out of her room, he and Bandra went straight to her sitting room. Feisty, he said. Then he smiled. Bandra looked at his face and saw scratches on his neck and chin. He showed her a bite mark on his arm. Bandra was apologetic. But Abdul Karim said, oh no, oh no, you should charge extra. After that, the stream of customers for Layla was steady, six, seven a day. Bandra watched her carefully. She was still obedient, eating only what was given her, speaking only with Gulshan, but on some mornings, Bandra noticed that her eyes were red. She once spied mysterious burn marks on her ankle. One evening, she handed her a knife, the curved one attached to a flat wooden base to cut vegetables, and Layla reached for it, and, was sh and then she stared at it. A knife. And then, for the first time, Layla smiled. Thank you. So a number of states and the federal government have done these programs to allow disabled people to work without losing Medicaid eligibility. Um, and so typically you buy into Medicaid and you pay a monthly premium. So California's version of this is particularly attractive, the California Working Disabled Program. It has a lot of great features. Marcella could earn income. She could retain more income than she could under regular Medicaid. She could even save her earnings in a separate bank account that wouldn't count against the asset cap. This all sounds fabulous. So we ask a caseworker, well, slant her up, you know? She's gotta be eligible, right? And the caseworker says she's not eligible. And I say, health policy expert, that can't be. Everybody's eligible for this thing. Yeah, so um, that last thing was very interesting for sure. Uh, they talk about uh, how a lot of times um, it's a lot easier for people to uh, not work and get better uh, benefits in uh, Medicare and all sorts of that than it is for people who work like minimum wage jobs. So a lot of times it's 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 very interesting because I know some folks who are, are who are in welfare who uh, if they do start working that they basically get a lot, a lot of their benefits cut in half with Medicare just because they're uh, they're trying to work again. So yeah, I can see why there's a lot of incentive to stay on welfare. But that's uh, that's not here nor there. Let's talk a little bit more about um, 
terrible movies. So coming out um, this year is a whole bunch of just, uh, just this week is just awful. Just like I just looked at the movies and it's like, oh, oh okay. But we're going to um, start off with Get Out, which is uh, a, a, a movie which is basically the kind of like the premiere directing of a comedy writer. Um, Jordan Peele from the uh, show uh, Key and Peele um, makes his de- directorial debut in this uh intense thriller so a lot of times uh what like most uh, filmmakers do is like when you first start out as a film- filmmaker you make like a really big thriller like crazy um um horror type movie and this is um no far from it in this modern take on slavery comes a story about a boy and a girl who travel down to meet the parents the parents quickly make things awkward when they talk about the boy's ethnicity Get Out, from the writer and star of Keanu, Jordan Peele, who makes his director, di- directorial debut with this uh, modern-day slavery with mental suggestion and some kind of hypnosis to make non-white folk, non-white folk obedient to their group. And the, 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 see, watch as this guy fights everybody to get out. Um, chances are that the girl he dates is basically kind of like one of those Black Widow types who... Um, um, who like brings boyfriends over who you know who happen to be a certain so she specifically targets uh, black kids to uh, start dating and then bring them back to the parents is like these are my parents and then there's like a scene where he's just kind of like sitting there he's like he's like I can't move he's like well guess what you got hypnotized now uh, could you bring me a sandwich so uh, yeah I, I bet it's more intense than that so <laughs> that's the movie that's coming out today. Up next is a movie called Collide, which uh, from uh, people who like with fast cars and fast moving thrillers comes Collide, which follows a kid who has always played second fiddle to most characters in movies. He saves the girl only way he knows how to, by stealing cars. Um, Hopefully this movie won't collide with box office as it tries to employ big names like Anthony Anthony Hopkins is in this movie? To play uh, parts in this movie so this kid can get the right part to save his girlfriend. What some people go through to get quick cash that doesn't involve um, crowdsourcing or crowdfunding. Um, Moving on, there is... Oh! I double clicked on it, which made it play for like 30 seconds. So here is the next movie. It's called Rock Dog, um, singular. Um, Do you like animated features about anamorphic animals struggling to grow and come into their own to become better people? Uh, Then Rock Dog is the movie for you. Watch a dog from Tibet take his guitar and go to the big city to become a rock star, while at the same time learn lessons that only the voice of Luke Wilson can portray. Big names who get paid more than the animators of the movie will show when um, corners are cut and m- making this um, by the books being famous movie, Rock Dog. Also, I'm pretty sure that there's uh, an Andy Warhol type cat character which makes uh, drugs look fun. Don't do drugs. Moving on, that is basically concludes all the new movies that are coming out in the mainstream. Um, I mean, I didn't really hear about Rock Dogs until the last week or so, and um, I saw like a preview. I was like, huh, okay. I mean, like, you know that a movie's gonna be. Uh, pretty bad when their own studio doesn't actually uh, promote their movie like at all until like the last minute. It was like, oh, guess what? There's this movie coming out. We just didn't want to spend another 10, 20 million dollars to make sure it's running on your television ads just so you probably won't even see the movie because we don't have faith in this movie. And that concludes Pre-Critic. I'm going to leave on that note. Um, Up next, we got dubbing stuff. I have a very nice little cool little dubbing stuff, which uh, um, is from the movie called um, Invasion of the Bee Girls. Um, I saw part of this movie, and I'm just like, I can't show this on TV. So I'll show the very uh, simplistic... um, like kind of like meeting so if you guys are planning to watch it this is like one of those kind of like grand house movies in the late 60s early 70s so it's a very like provocative type film but the parts i'm going to show you are just very mundane and it's, it kind of reminds me of uh, the city council which we'll be talking about right after this episode of dubbing stuff all right all right all right everybody settle down settle down i don't see you settling you all better settle down all right guys the first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes. Let's wait until the camera gets nice and close on me, and I'll explain exactly. First on the agenda, approval of minutes. 
All right, so are we all in agreement? All right, great. Any opposed? Okay, that's great too. All right, so now we're going to talk about some things that have been uh, happening in our neighborhoods that I think is very, 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 very important. Death is a part of life, and life cannot be lived unless we know the knowledge that death is coming for all of us. And I think that it's very important because I'm pointing my pen at you guys that death is something that is realistic. Whoa, whoa, whoa okay. You've got to be kidding me. <clears throat> so, to my left, I have a guy whose hair is turning white because of aging. And he has a lot of things to say about aging that you guys need to listen to. I, I don't like this. This is uncomfortable. Our text is at work. Do not be alarmed by my appearance. I have aged to a certain point where my hair has turned the color white. <coughs> white. That's she looks pretty good. The color mm. of my hair. I have and great peripheral vision, just so you know. My hair will become completely and utterly Sup? white. I feel as though you're not listening. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that aging comes for all of us. I am that basic. I think we have to have a point of order here. All right, all right. I'm just talking about life and death. I didn't mean to say anything bad about anything. I just wanted to say that some people are unnaturally about dying this. in and around this city, and this is what this forum is all about. <sighs> With uh, certain disappearances and certain people coming up dead, it's come clear that this city is not safe. Uh, yeah, you just quiet here. This forum isn't about death and life. This is about action and what we need to do as a community to fix this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just say a couple other things. Um, Hoopastank is my favorite band. Alright, alright, sir. You need to calm down. Hoopastank isn't that great of a band. This isn't some kind of witch hunt. We need to work together to find a solution to these problems of all these unnatural deaths. You hear me? You got that? Okay? This isn't about you. This isn't about Hoopastank or anything like that. Witch hunt? This isn't about no witch hunt. Life it's about Hoopastank. We want Hoopastank to play at our next rally. Isn't that right? We want Hoopastank. Hoopastank. He's so hot Hoopa right Stank. now. I like Hoopa Stank, just so you guys know. Uh, moving on, um, I got everything you guys need to know about what's happening in the city of Missoula. We'll start off with some parks and conservation. In this meeting, they talked about the county-owned park that will be transferred to the city, and Donna Gockler goes over the plan of uh, Syringa Park, which will be located, uh, I'm, I'm totally like botching up the name, so if, if I'm getting it wrong, then just bear with me. So it's a park that's near Mount Jumbo, up the Rattlesnake area in Lincoln Hills, and Donna Gockler kind of like talks a little bit more about um, what the city and of course the na nearby neighborhoods are doing with this particular park. Um, the neighborhood plan for this area includes pump tracks, uh, so just fun little pathways with a bunch of bumps and jumps uh, for kids to play on. It's an ideal location for it because we have a number of unauthorized jumps on Mount Jumbo and they happen to be in a black bear habitat corridor. And uh, this is easily accessible by a mountain line uh, and it's obviously a high density or uh, per capita percentage of bicyclists uh, between the university and the Rattlesnake Recreation Area. We also have partners on this project, so this isn't necessarily about adopting the master plan, but I wanted you to be aware of it because it is a special use. What we do with neighborhood parks is the master plan is adopted by the neighborhood, so in this case upper and lower Rattlesnake, and it's also adopted by the park board. And then we bring all regional master plans all the way up to council. All right, so the whole point of this particular thing is um, it's supposed to help um, kind of like gear me over, gear you guys into thinking about what it means to c transfer uh, county um, property into city-owned parks. So what the county's kind of done is kind of like they've had the park, but they don't really do anything with it. So what the city wants to do is kind of like 
um, get the park from the county and be like, hey, we want to manage this park and we want to turn this into a really cool park to help encourage parks. And Donna Gockler is all about parks and recreation. So um, that kind of just kind of like just mulls over what they're talking about. This the motion is did move forward and the city will discuss the future of this particular park near Mount Jumbo. Next, uh, the city is working on a mapping plan for 911's dispatch. Um, so this requires uh, $10,000 going into effort to help improve accessibility and working on the wayfinding project to provide markers for trail goers to identify areas in trails to improve 911 emergency calls and response time. This is highlighted topic for the parks and conservation for um, the 9 a.m. meeting from Wednesday morning. This is particularly important because I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, the, I guess, um, by putting markers and trail markers and stuff like that, they actually have to solidify names for a lot of these trails because some people are uh, well aware that some of these trails have names and people already have kind of names here and there. But the names have constantly kind of changed with uh, motion, but there's no actually official name. Uh, a lot of times is like this is like one of the things that's just like, huh. That's that's it. That like that, I didn't even know that a, a lot of the trails didn't really officially have those names, even though people give them names. Doesn't mean they officially have kind of like names within the parks and recs and the trail system. So that's what they're going to be working on today. I mean, that, that's what they're working on that day to figure out about how they're going to approach uh, figuring out ways to have better uh, improvement on trails. Kind of like you know how the mile markers on highways be like, oh, I'm a uh, I'm off highway marker one uh, one fifteen. My car broke down it's like oh we'll be right there in a uh, half an hour or something depending on how long it takes us to drive there from our nearest uh, uh triple a that kind of thing so that's the idea is that they want to improve that for people who are basically on the trail and maybe get mauled by a mountain lion or something it's like oh mountain lion i need somebody to help me it's like where are you it's like i'm i'm on this particular part of the trail it's like oh we'll be right there in like within seconds rather than being like oh can you describe the area for you sir but here the here is donna glocker once again talking a little bit more about the importance of the uh these new uh system and explaining a little bit more about it critical it is that trails have a specific name particularly if they are frequently used for commuting and as all of you know we have a very high uh, commute use on the Milwaukee Trail, Rounds River Trail and the Bitterroot Trail. We also realized as we were developing the parks, trails and open space map how confusing it is for people to figure out what trails they're on and finally in discussions with um, Chris Lonsbury when he currently the chief of operations for the county but at that time he was with uh, managing dispatch 911 response and what we learned is um, through anecdotal and then actual documented information through 911 is when people don't know for sure where they're at on a pathway they were defaulting to the Kim Williams to the point that dispatch had to say what can you see and oftentimes they'd be next to the Missoulian they might be near Karis Park and really, the Kim Williams starts at the mouth of Hellgate Canyon going east. All right. So that was uh, Donna Gockler kind of explaining about how difficult people are having with the trails because, the, you know, like the popular trails are Kim Williams Trail, Milwaukee Trail. And also uh, another big thing that's happening is that with the uh, incarnation of the Tiger Grant. Um, so uh, wait, wait, let me just actually back up just a little bit. I want to get into the Tiger Grant and the Tiger Trail quite yet. Um, so what Donna Gawker and other trail partnerships decided to do was to see about expanding trail signage because, let's face it, none of you know all the trails that go in and out and around Missoula. Um, you may know a couple things. Okay, so here's an example. The Milwaukee Trail was once a railway that connected the Chicago to Chicago from Missoula, um, and there were some there there uh, some groups remapping uh, the areas to kind of reconnect the Milwaukee Trail completely. So um, I, there's also other names for this particular trail in different parts of this trail. It's not just the Milwaukee Trail um, or pathway. What so um, according to Miss Gockler, most people commute through bikes then recreate, which is uh, opposite than most other communities in the United States. Uh, now talking about the Tiger Grant that has created a trail that has spanned over 50 miles long um, and Missoula working with connecting this trail would retain the name Bitterroot Trail through Missoula. So the trail is going to be called the Bitterroot Trail and it's funded through the Tiger Grant, which is millions and millions of dollars, like $20 million. 
um, of federal money went into making the trail from Hamilton to Missoula, and it, they're going to call it the Bitterroot Trail. So whatever the trail was called already in Missoula will have to be renamed. So that's kind of like the thing that they're working with. So Marilyn Marler, Marler is concerned about people's reaction to the name change, and this is what she had to say. And we also have the response from Donna Glocker in this clip. Is are people going to be resistant to that not being known as the Kim Williams Trail anymore? Do we just wait for that tradition to go away? Um, will people be mad because there's an impression that it is officially named the Kim Williams? And, and whether or not it's true, I know it's the Kim Williams Natural Area and people call it the Kim Williams Trail. Are people going to perceive that we're changing the name away from Kim Williams? And will there be unhappiness about that? I was just wondering how much this was discussed. I think that there's, you know, my guess is, first of all, is that locals will continue to call the Kim Williams Trail the Kim Williams Trail as it goes through the natural area. And, and I, don't, I think that's okay. Um, you know, formally it's the Milwaukee Trail through the Kim Williams Natural Area. We will continue to um, note the trail and maps as the Milwaukee Trail, but we'll continue to also note the Kim Williams Natural Area on, on either side of that trail. So, yes, I mean, you know, we did have one comment about naming Ron's River Trail, Ron's River Trail, because of somebody who didn't want Ron recognized. Uh, we had, I would expect that we could have that. Um, the reasoning and discussion in Park Board and with... Um, MPO staff is really has to do with the continuity of the Milwaukee corridor uh, in the distance that it covers. All right, and so uh, uh, <laughs> so basically, uh, Donna Gockler just kind of responded by saying that um, they're going to formally name it that, but you guys can still na call it whatever you guys want to call it. Um, <laughs> Moving on, um, with, connection, with connecting trails, it's hard to think what was once named something for so long gets renamed to accommodate the longer trail, which may cause some um, speculation. Okay, here's an example. Maybe they go, they can do like a McDonald's stretch name after the trail that um, they wish to connect to. Let's say like it's the Milwaukee Trail, and I mean, I I'm not sure what, where the McDonald Trail is, so just bear with me. Um, the McDonald's stretch of the Milwaukee Trail you know, you can name it there, so that'd be like, oh yeah, oh, oh I'm on the McDonald Trail. It's like, oh yeah, so you're on the the, the that part of that stretch at that particular place to be more specific. Um, but when uh, someone falls on their bike and says they fell on the Bitterroot Trail, which would be vague because it's going to be 50 miles, it'll be covered. So by inserting these small little notes in names, it would also make it easier to find those who have. Uh, fallen down and cannot get up. Uh, John Dabari asks the question that uh, may be on most people's minds, and this is what he has to say. I think the whole point of trying to get the nomenclature simple and consistent is right, but are we going to have a bunch of AKAs then? And I, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what's the best way to, if you want consistency, how to achieve it? Um, for us, and at least through our experience and through the mapping that we've been doing with um, all of the folks we work with and the uh, with planning um, MPO staff, with our staff, uh, our user groups, the this I think achieves what we need to. I think the biggest change for citizens is there's actually a name that they can remember for the North Trail, Ron's River, and because people didn't know what to call it. it. It was the trail on the north side of the river or the trail through Karras. Or, and I think the biggest change for folks will be that when they're on the section of the Milwaukee Trail through Tool Park area between um, Higgins and Madison, that's the biggest change for them because it's no longer the Kim Williams, which it never was. Um, Kim Williams started in Hellgate Canyon. So it really is just an effort to begin the process of clearly badging trails for, for wayfinding and 911 dispatch. All right. So um, that was I mean, basically everything you guys needed to know about um, these trails. I have another quote, but I'm just going to skip it because it's just basically saying uh, how much this, how important this thing is um, from the perspective of uh, a public comment. Um, so this is a presentation, and I'm happy to say that the um, by formalizing the trail system in terms of names and locations on maps, well, it will allow uh, for folks to see new trails that they have not normally known or 
and rediscover the trails that connect our fair city. And I think this is a great program and be like, oh, I didn't know that trail was there. It's like, oh, thanks. Uh, making this official names to these trails is like, oh, this is also known as this trail. I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. Who is this person? Oh, this person was very uh, spearhead. Oh, they worked with trails for over 40 years. Wow, they must have loved trails, that kind of thing. So it's a nice little, uh, by formalizing it, it also uh, um, connects it a little bit more to our Missoula history along with um, all sorts of interesting factoids and finding new trails that you may not have even heard of. I, I didn't even know that the Milwaukee Trail, w w I mean like most of the trails here, like the, the Kim Williams the or the popular Kim Williams section where it goes through Missoula, which is not actually Kim Williams Trail, which is part of the Milwaukee, um, was an old rail railway um, that basically this is like, hey, it's an old railroad. We're not going to use the railroad anymore. It's like, okay, let's take out the railroads and uh, salvage and recycle the the metal and make it expand for railroads we do like to use. I was like, okay, what are we going to do with this um, plat plotted down um, natural trail? I was like, oh, did you say natural trail? I was like, yeah, I totally said, I totally saw it was a natural trail. I was like, why don't we just make it like a, you know, a walk or, you know, like maybe we can pave it someday and we can put like mini motorized vehicles and whatnot in there. It's like, cool. There it is. There's your trail. Uh, that's basically how it worked. Is like it was already there, so why not just keep it going? So what uh, what a lot of uh, organizations are doing, trying to connect this long trail. So eventually, we might we might even see a uh, long bike trail that goes all the way from Missoula, all the way to Chicago. Imagine that. It, okay. So um, I do have another. Um, um, government uh, thing that was concludes your parks and conservation from your city committee meetings. I have land use and planning, but I'm going to show you an art clip from the uh, Clay Studio of Missoula. Um, so without further ado, here is a taste of the Clay Studio of Missoula, and when I come back, I'll talk everything about land use and planning. <laughs> Definitely one of my favorite uh, art pieces in that particular video was the Naked Mole Rat on the Peach. Uh, moving on, I got some land use and planning for you guys. Several issues have elevated in the need to modify the ordinance directing membership for the Historic Preservation Commission. This includes reducing the membership and eliminating the geographic region requirements while keeping elements of expertise required to be part of the certified local government in place. This meeting will take place this meeting took place around uh, Wednesday afternoon. The city is looking to shrink the historic preservation to about seven with, uh, of course, two additional swing members that they can do. So they need about seven or so, five to seven uh, members to have a quorum um, requirements um, because most of the controversy happened around the demolition permit of the old mercantile in terms of members not being in town during key meetings, um, which also required the members to meet more frequently, which made the process very difficult. And um, um, they, uh, so what, what a lot of the city was trying to do is trying to like make it a lot more accessible and um, make the uh, Historic Preservation Commission a little bit more uh, kind of like altering it in a way. So they're kind of trying to make it a little more, a little more streamlined and a little better communication in that respect. Uh, John Wilkins comments on this particular item, um, and this is what he had to say about the Historic Preservation Commission past and future. But I think you have to really get it out to the public that they're an advisory group. 
and they advise us, and we're the bottom line. And uh, I think a lot of the public didn't really realize that in our last little uh, episode that went on, and so I'd like to really emphasize that. All right, so uh, just John Wilkins kind of highlighting the fact that uh, it was more up to the city than it was up to the Historic Preservation Commission. is not an advisory board, which they kind of go over, but they have enough power to uh, put a plan through the city. Ted Nugent, city attorney, uh, mentions what uh, the rule maker really is. So here's Ted Nugent, the attorney for the city of Missoula. You can stagger your terms. The city council should be determining terms, not the commission. That's a city council function, and that's an inappropriate delegation to the commission to let them get a, a bylaw and establish bylaws that tries to set terms. It should be the city council that sets the terms for any of the boards and any of the commissions. That's more a legislative function. But then if you were starting with a new board, you'd just say so many are four years, so many are two years, and then after that they're four years all the way. But that's how you start out these boards with staggered terms. Uh, and then uh, one thing I was going to mention to Gwen that didn't come up in our conversation, but I was thinking in your presentation, with respect to the alternate, you might want to give some thought as to is one alternate going to be at large or one alternate at expert or is it going to be kind of a wild card because it's something if there's two people absent in one of those th categories of three, Mm -hmm. It could be lopsided, so oh. you probably want to give some thought to that. Uh, all right, so um, the meeting is all basically talking about what they're going to do with the meeting and kind of clarifying some things as well. Gwen Jones talks about clarifying the new approach to the uh, revamped uh, historic preservation. And I think we know where we want to go with the membership. Um, the issue of quasi versus advisory is a much bigger issue. Having spent a lot of time on this, the way I see it is most of these commissions across America are quasi-judicial. A very small portion of what they deal with gets into that realm, but having, having been researching ordinances, I think there are so many more specific tools in terms of how to write it specifically so that it's a far more uh, a process that is not so vague, but instead is, is far more structured. That's what the word I'm looking for, for how to approach it. And then if they have, if they can pull in extra legal help and advice if they need it and any other expertises, I feel like we're going to give them the tools so that, of course, there's always, they're going to bring a certain viewpoint to these, and that's why we want them there. But All right, so that uh, was the last quote I have from the uh, um, historic, uh, I mean, um, the uh, land use and planning, which will, the motion will move to admin and finance, so they'll update it. And the motion um, to update the requirements to change the HPC, uh, Historic Preservation Committee, operates in terms of the way the board meets and operates was approved by the city council um, and will be, I mean, I mean it was moved to uh, additional talks and additional um, committee meetings as well. And I, I believe they probably will talk about it next Monday. So look for that um, on your local listings and you can find out more information by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Here's a nice little website. Um, you can also Google City of Missoula and this will be the page. You can go to Gear Government, you go under City Council, Agenda Webcast Minutes, and you can basically uh, see what I just showed you about everything um, in terms of um, agenda items, um, um, and it, it's really cool because the agenda items are hyperlinks. If you click on the links, they bring you to the meeting's particular talk about that. So you don't have to go through the, uh, I don't know, a lot of times with the land use and plan, it's always about like rezoning and stuff like that. So that concludes everything you guys need to know about what's happening in the city, updating the Historic Preservation Commission. And I think the biggest thing that's happening with the city is that they're going to be starting naming some trails and also renaming trails to uh, accommodate the connectivity of trails. Because when you start connecting all these trails together, and you have a bunch of different names, which names are going to overpower the others. And I think that's something that I definitely take away from the city council meetings as well. And I, I guess um, I was a little giddier than I usually am when I talk about city council. But I do have this very cool... Um, uh, video I've made um, with some of the kids at Hellgate High School. Uh, this is Flagship Friday, 
And um, I'm just going to just play it out, and I hope you guys enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed making it. Okay. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the channel. I'm just chilling. Got out of school. Right on the hoverboard. Oh, yeah. Guys, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and do all the... Oh, <laughs> Oh my god, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Dabbing. What started out as a harmless YouTube video, Liam, the creator of a high school guide to hoverboarding, was struck down by what seems to be a careless act of a dab. In this video, we will discover what exactly transpired from who done it to why done it. Join host Neil Wells as he investigates. Dabbing too far. A YouTuber story. Liam from high school on a hoverboard and the search for likes. Welcome back to Tales from Hell, Gate High School. Today, the serial dab stabber. Hi, I'm Ellen, and I'm an expert in dabology. Well, I've been really, everybody's been obsessed with dabs lately, and when it first came out, I didn't, I wasn't quite sure what it was, and I wasn't sure what to think of it either. So, um, so I did some research, I thought, oh, that sounds like actual fun, and then I found, about this, found out about this field, and then I decided to join it. So yeah. I was just, you know, vlogging as I usually do, daily vlogs at YouTube.com. Anyway, uh, I uh, was just cruising on my hoverboard and I just saw a hand come out of nowhere and I could clearly see at that split second that someone was dabbing from the corner, but I couldn't see who it was. and. I was instantly blinded when I got hit in the face. Luckily this side survived, but this one not too good. He was riding his hoverboard, and all of a sudden, you see a hand pop out of nowhere. I don't know if you think that's crazy. That's crazy to me. So, I think there's, there's this new uh, trend going on in America. Uh, in American culture called the dab. The dab was first discovered in 1714, right after the death of Albert Einstein. Einstein left all his notes on memes, and then tragedy struck. It took three months before, before our great hero, John F. Kennedy, was able to recover these papers and bring them to George Washington. George Washington then performed the first recorded dab. Steve I, our resident conspiracy theorist of the dab, sheds some light on what he think may have happened. So you saw the hand pop out of nowhere, and he gets hit, and he's screaming for his life, and then he falls down, and then this guy, you see this guy, and I think it's the guy who, who did the dab, who, who attacked this man, who, who destroyed the vlogger's life. I, I like I like Liam. I think he's an okay guy most of the time, but he, I don't think he deserved any of this. And if you know, I think it's just I think it was an accident. I don't think anything was on purpose. I, I think it was just some innocent dabbing. He just walks around on his hoverboard and goes, "Do it, you have to quit." 
too legit to quit. It's annoying after a while. He changed, man. He changed. I did dab, but it was an innocent dab. I don't think I touched Liam. I, I really think that that was Owen. Jackson, well, we've been friends for a while, so I don't know why he'd do that to me. Uh, he doesn't seem too violent in a way of uh, purposefully dabbing someone in the face. Would you say he um, accidentally dabbed you in the face? Uh, that's a possibility. So like sometimes I'm hanging out with Liam and sometimes I'm hanging out with Owen. Oh, yeah. I, I think I hang out with Owen probably a little more than Liam. Or at least, it's, but not, not by much. He was just like, okay, like, you know, you didn't really want to talk to him, but he was just kind of there, you know? And then afterwards, he's just like in everybody's face, you know? Just, hi, I have a hoverboard, arcade fire. I don't really care much about him one way or another, but like, uh, I feel sorry that he got dabbed. You're the old, you're the old, you're the old, you're the old, you're the old. In the eyeball, like, that's just not fun. But, um,. Do you think he deserved to get dabbed? I don't think so. Are there some people who you think should be dabbed? Oh, yes. I feel like a lot of like people getting hurt in videos could probably be staged because like, what are the chances that they just had a camera on them when they, they got hit in the nuts or, you know, f fell, fell like tripped over something. So I, it, it's definitely sort of suspicious. Owen was the guy who dabbed. He didn't show up in the video, only his hand did. And I saw Jackson, and he, I think, is the victim. And he said sorry. He didn't say sorry because he dabbed on him. He said sorry because he fell down on the ground. He's always trying to push his religion on you. <laughs> What? What? Uh, <clears throat> he <clears throat> he doesn't cover his cough a lot of the times. He's like like this one time he he coughed directly in my face and I wasn't even sick and then like the next day I was like <clears throat> and I was like I was like and I was like dude I think you got me sick he's like no I had allergies I was like whatever um, but yeah and he blows his nose on his shirt which is gross. Jackson. Jackson is being a delusional tool. I think that people who are into hoverboard stuff are just like trying to avoid walking pretty much, you know? Just, I can walk, I can ride slightly faster than walking. You know what I mean? And Owen seems not like the trustworthy guy that he claims he is. And uh, I think he dabbed on him. And, of course, no one would do that because he's not trustworthy. Could it be that true comedy must come from complete randomness, random chance? Did Liam force this humor, therefore making it not humorous, but instead fairly mundane and, frankly, Kind of miserable. These are the questions. These are the questions of life. So the questions we must ask ourselves every day of every day of every night of every day. You know what? I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know. Believe it. You know what I think? I think that Owen is the enemy. Liam is the enemy. And Jackson was the water. He was the water! Look before you dab. Wear a helmet. Use protection. Ah, uh, it's...
pretty, uh, pretty gonna be pretty interesting is what I'm gonna say. Stabbing can be very dangerous if you're in tight spaces or tight, narrow hallways. So if you're gonna dab, make sure you're, it doesn't, like, there could be people in a room in there if you want, but um, definitely um, watch where you're going, check for people, and, um, and, the, and then if you have a grunge against somebody, don't use dabs. A viral trend will probably die eventually, so that might make things a little safer. Perhaps hoverboards shouldn't have ever been invented in the first place. Perhaps Liam should have watched where he's going. Perhaps memes are the true evil here. Perhaps Owen should give me back my sandwich that he ate last week. I want one. That was all the lunch we, we had. <sighs> See you next time. All right, that was um, a Dabber's Tale about dabbing and dab, 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 all sorts of dab. So I still have enough time to talk about what's happening in and around Missoula for a quick little events highlights. So here are a couple things happening happening in your uh, city of Missoula. Uh, there's a teddy bear sleepover at the Missoula Public Library starting at 4.30 p.m. and it goes until uh, 10 a.m. Um, Saturday morning. Um, Missoula Public Library's department hosts the teddy bear sleepover. It's an event where your child can bring their favorite stuffed animal and have a special story time. It starts at 4.30 at the Dragon Rug area of the children's department. Children will be uh, then eat snack and the story before tucking them uh, stuffed animals in for the night. The next morning at 10 a.m. children can pick up their oh, so it's not like the kids don't sleep over their stuffed animal sleeps over and it's basically kind of like it, this would be like a plot device for like Toy Story with like stuffed animals okay so uh, the large meeting room and enjoy a light breakfast as well as the slideshow of their stuffed animals um, nighttime shenanigans so I'm pretty sure that uh, when the kids set their stuff aside that the, a lot of times that the, the uh, Missoula Public Library will basically take pictures of their bears and stuffed animals doing all sorts of crazy night stuff because it is Friday night and there's a lot going on here because um, also happening tonight is the 7th Annual Winter Brew Fest. Uh, Karis Park, shake it off with the winter blues and enjoy some w brews. Um, brought to you by the folks who bring you the Garden City Brew Fest it, um, on May 6th. But tonight, enjoy a night of Karis Park testing some of the finest brews that Ms. Montana has to offer. And there's definitely a variety because there seems to be a new brewery company that opens up every other second. There's one right now. There's another brew. Okay. I think there's like a statistic going on here. It's like, um, eh, every two minutes a brewery opens up. There you go. Okay, anyways, um, the Hospice Ball 2017 is theme is a great gas be masquerade uh, a hos uh, hospice care foundation excited to announce their theme for the 2017 hospice ball a great gatsby masquerade and this event will happen at the hilton um garden inn starting at 5 30 p.m and i believe it will go on until 10 p.m tonight um that which basically kind of highlights everything that's happening friday there's a lot of things happening in brewfest also for sort of great things um saturday there's um missoula actually it's a uh, Missoula Urban Demonstration um, Project. Um, join MUD uh, instructor Mark Vandermeer at uh, of Watershed Consulting and Bad Goat Forest Productions products, I'm sorry, uh, for this fun, informative, and hands-on workshop, The Basics of Blacksmithing. Mark will show you the basics of lighting a forge, heating your irons, and shaping the molten metal. And this is happening at 10 a.m. Saturday morning at the, uh, the MUD, which is uh, right behind, um, can't think of it right now. It's uh oh man I, moving on it's it's just off of Russell Street it's I can't think of it I it's 
you, you can look them up online, Mizzou Urban Demonstration Project. Uh, I'll think of it in a second. I just can't think of it when I'm actually thinking about it. You know how that goes. Uh, also, at the same time, there's a community rummage sale at Orchard Homes, which is um, off of 3rd Street, basically in that giant barn um, off of um, Reserve Street, and it's behind Natural Grocers in that area. So they're doing uh, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you're interested in reserving a table for $28, there are only 12 tables left, according to what I got this online. I'm assuming some of them are already going out of the way, so you still have a chance. It starts at 9 a.m., Orchard Sale, Community community room sale, excuse me, a uh, refrigerator art at the Learning Center at Red Willow. So you get a painted old refrigerator, creating art that has been shown to improve and enhance physical, mental, and emotional well-being. The Learning Center at Red, Red Willow hosts this uh, special fun workshop guaranteed to produce art uh, suitable for hanging on the fridge. They'll provide uh, supplies to provide the table. So it's a uh, refrigerator art. In magnet form, there's introductions into psychic development happening at the Water Lily. So if you think you're psychic, you guys can find out at 3 p.m. And um, they'll know whether you come or not because they're psychic. Uh, <laughs> evening of Walt and Chocolate. So Downtown Nest Collective is doing a Walt and Chocolate night at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Alberton Community Varieties Show. Alberton Elementary School is hosting a, a variety show at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Doors open at 6.30. All donations and proceeds will go to uh, theater... theater through theater productions and tennis court park renovations. Um, Sunday, MCT is hosting auditions for The Wizard of Oz, and I'm out of time, so thanks for joining me. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, there's definitely a lot going on. You should check out by going to MissoulaEvents.net. And for more information, log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Go to MCAT.org to find out everything you need to know about MCAT and more. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. <laughs>